Welcome to another edition of Success Talk with Dr. Herbert Harris. You know, this is a program where we talk about people, their challenges, their victories, and how they made their breakthroughs. And today we have an incredible guest. And I love her name, Christy Love. It just sounds like a sounds like a rock star, <laughs> a, a, a performer. And Christy Love, uh, a communications coach, TV producer, uh, author. Christy, welcome to Success Talk. Thank you, Dr. Herb. Well, I, I tell you, when I look at your resume, you have done so many things. I say, you must have started it at two. And you said, nope, I started at four. <laughs> yes. That's incredible. Share a little about your background, where you're from, what kind of family, education, what, what was the foundation that created Christy Love? Ooh, all right. Where do I start? Well, I was uh, born in Detroit, Michigan, Motown, Motor City. And my family named me after, my parents named me after a movie star. There's a show called Get Christy Love. Remember that? Yeah. Back in the yeah. 70s. Yeah, yeah, I was named after her. I know I'm dating myself, but I was named after her, but that name stuck. <laughs> all right. And so that's why I used to brand myself. Pretty love, but that's what that's who everyone knows me as. Um, but yeah, moved uh, moved from Detroit at a young age. My mom remarried to uh, with my dad, and we I think they moved about thirty three times when I last counted. Crazy, he moved everywhere. My dad was in sales, so um, now as growing up uh, as an adult, I said I am going to find my forever dream home. I'm going to stay there. <laughs> and so I live a little north of uh, Houston, Texas, in a little town called Spring, Texas, with my husband, Ernest Williams. He is a retired Navy SEAL. Um, I have, my educational background is that I have a business degree. I have a master's degree in, in um, MBA and also a bachelor's degree in business management. Uh, my, my journey began about 20 years ago uh, when I was working toward climbing the corporate ladder and also establishing a business of the marketing business that I wanted to start, I was starting. And I put all the things together, all the pieces. You know, I did the research, I wrote books, I created a website, all the branding, I told all my friends and family. But when it was time to promote my book or my company, I couldn't do it. Wow. I, was, I was working at a corporate company, a Fortune 500 company as well, and I wanted to climb the corporate ladder. And again, I didn't have the communication skills to do it. I had all the background, the education, I had the experience. I had um, uh, everything you needed, right? I've been in the company for a long time. I think it was nine years, but I couldn't advance because of my lack of communication ability. And so that's what led me into learning and mastering the art of public speaking because I knew it was valuable and vital for my life. And so I, I joined a local Toastmasters uh, chapter. It was right down the street from my job. And I remember that day distinctly. I got to work around five o'clock and the meeting started about seven. So I said, oh, I'll just drive on over. So it was like on the beach of California. So I said, oh, I'll just drive on over there and enjoy the, you know, the scenery and wait for the meeting to start. Well, that day is still ingrained in my head. I sat in a car for two hours screaming, crying, hyperventilating. I was calling my mother. I was terrified because they were going to ask me to speak. But if anyone knows me, I'm pretty courageous. So I was able to do it. But when I walked in, all I could do was say, hi, my name is Christy. When they asked me to greet myself and sit down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the back, I was terrified. Mm -hmm. uh, but I kept coming back. And I kept coming back and I kept coming back. And of course, you get better and better and better. And then I started helping others and mentoring more people. Well, I remember one day I helped, um, one time I helped a gentleman with his public speaking skills. He was just recently laid off. Um, we helped him with, you know, certain tactics, you know, in, in regards to gaining a better presence because he wrote a book. This guy went off to make a multi-million dollar company in a very short amount of time. But what I taught him, I said, mm -hmm. wow, I've been doing this for years. He said, Chrissy, come on, let's go for the ride. Mm. And so that's what led me to like really start my company in, in this area, public speaking and media, and become a communication and connection coach. Wow. Now, you know, so many people experience a barrier. So your fear was what? Fear of public speaking? Well, fear of being in front of people. That's something we're not taught in school. Mm. We 
they're taught all the academics and I'm learning and memorization and these books and, 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 and reciting lectures and test taking. No one teaches us how to present ourselves in front of people. No one teaches us how to communicate unless you're in like a debate team or you're a lawyer or something like that. You don't get that education. Wow. So that's one of the things that was missing. I mean, in, in my uh, master's, when I was working toward my master's degree, we did presentations. But, you know, that's in my, I was in my 20s, late 20s at that time. Mm -hmm. And I still had a hard time. So I knew that I was had a problem in this area around, you know, that error. Yes. You know, it, it, it's interesting. Sometimes, you know, the thing that is your challenge can be your, your strongest. Years ago, I had a chance to uh, spend a little time with Sidney Poitier. And my uncle was actually, my uncle's partner was actually his lawyer. So I met him as a young man when he was just starting out. He actually owned a, a restaurant called Ribs in the Rough <laughs> in New York. And his thing was, he stuttered. And when mm. he came to America, <laughs> you know, he stuttered. <laughs> he he had a strong accent. And mm. all of these things, when he said, you know, decide he wanted to be an actor, that was like, yeah, right. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> you know, hope hope maybe silent movies will come back, you know. But oh no. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. It was really, it was really a struggle. And he was sharing how, you know, he didn't really have a lot of that, you might say, professional help. So he had his ways, people helped him, but he had his ways. He said he put rocks in his mouth, the little marbles, so that it kind of made him conscious of his tongue and made him speak. I guess you speak deliberately or you swallow the marble. <laughs> it's kind of oh, no. <laughs> yeah. But how he was able now to turn that that mindset around to become, a, a, you know, as an actor, I mean, he was like the model for proper speaking for speaking distinctly and for enunciation for pronunciation so you made a breakthrough like that was there anything that 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 one thing that just sort of made you know that you could do it well i think being surrounded by a group of people who are so supportive Mm. You know, I was so hard on my t uh, on myself during that time because I would for forget my words. My mind would go blank. I would stutter. I would slur my words. I had all of these deficiencies in speaking. But the people I spoke with that were in that environment always clapped. They always said, Chrissy, great job. Yeah. And so yeah. I, felt, I felt so good about my performance. And I knew that I was only going to get better as long as I continued to practice. And I think that's what your friend did. He practiced. Yes. Practice practice and you, and, and you and you really dive deep into wanting to get better you will mm -hmm. now, I think people get so bogged down by oh you know I can't do it oh I sucked or oh, I did a bad job and and they stop and that that you know stops them from reaching their goals but if they just continue to work at it continue to work at it ask questions ask for help yeah. uh, ask for guidance a mentorship something get a coach um, you're going to get better over time. We all start somewhere, right? Yes. Well, you know, I think you hit a couple. I like to highlight some of the learning points. Number one, and kudos to Toastmasters. So mm -hmm. many speakers just going in that environment. You know, somebody should really go back and look at all the speakers who have gone and uh, to the top and how many of them came through the Toastmasters, you know, format, that Toastmasters environment. And so for those of us, I know that there are people out there that would love to speak, would love to share. And that idea of going into a group, to having group support, the, almost like the mastermind working with you to help. Wow. Live that. Yeah. And, and with that, I guess it makes you feel like I can do this thing, man, I can do it. And as you say, when people applause, it's like it validates your efforts. <laughs> wow. Right. I saw the first, a great first step. And to getting in this area and getting better is having that you know network of people who really support you and who are also working towards their goals as well. Yeah. And and yeah, there's so much more public speaking can offer and and opportunities that it can bring you, but that's a great first start. Wow! Wow! Now, as you uh, so now you got into that. So you, how did you morph from being, you know, a public speaker now to really becoming a coach yourself and and branding and, 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 you know, doing all the great things you do. 
Well, so many things has evolved. I mean, when, when you're out there, uh, more people see you and people see what you're doing. And so you're getting all these opportunities. I know I do about two, three weeks opportunities to speak and help people. And I was, I was uh, speaking actually in Mexico and in front of a group of, it was a resort professional. So it was a sales training I was doing. And one of the ladies there, she saw me speaking and she invited me to um, do like a beta testing for a TV show. Mm-hmm. A TV show network that was just launching. It's called Win Win Women. It's a global women's advancement network. And they were looking for a communication expert. Mm-hmm. And that elevated me even more. But again, it's about getting yourself out there. I would never have gotten this opportunity if I hadn't gotten out there more. And then through the um, TV show, you know, I already had a podcast and everything just kind of evolved within that. You know, as you really get into a certain field, you're going to find that you're going to start gaining more gifts and talents and skills in that area that's going to allow you to expand and also be a benefit to your clients. Mm. And so I'm always looking for ways that I can benefit my clients. My clients, yes, they want to develop, you know, better public speaking skills, but how can I take them to the next level? How can I really help them to reach their goals? And usually their goals is gaining more exposure. And so those are all the things I'm always thinking about. Wow. Well, you know, obviously you're very good at what you do. And I can see how, you know, you, you, you it's that like you've gone through it. So you know how to do it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's true. Someone once said, never, never uh, take direction from a coach who's never played the game. <laughs> you know? right. I, I never just show that I'm I'm all this and I have it all figured out. No, it took me a long time to get to where I am now. A lot of heartache, a lot of self-doubt, insecurities, uh, lack of self-confidence, uh, feeling unworthy, not believing in myself to get to this point and a lot of hard work and dedication. I mean, when I was practicing this, I practiced five times a day, anytime throughout my day that I can find five minutes of practice, you know, and whether it was in a car or on the treadmill at lunch in the, in the bathroom stall, mm-hmm. I would practice. And so it didn't come naturally to me. So I, I do think that that's um, one benefit to hiring coaches is you really want someone who's gone through what you've gone through, right? Yeah. You've been through. Yeah. Well, now, when you say practice, what do you mean? Do you, you actually get in front of the mirror, actually go through a speaking routine? Oh, yes, yes. I practice, yes, with everything. I Yes. I used to, back in the day, before there was cell phones, before there were videos or anything like that, I would take the pillows and stuffed animals I had and place them all around my living room and dining room, and I would take a sheet of paper. Uh-huh. And I would draw a happy face on it, right? Happy face. Uh-huh. And I would paste or tape the pieces of paper on my pillows and stuffed animals. And that was my audience. And wow. so I would practice wow. speaking in front of them as if they were my audience and visualizing yes. uh, in my mind that I was speaking in front of people. Now, that was my next question. How do you use visualization? You know, as a my turning point as a speaker one day was, uh, <laughs> it was the weirdest thing I was, I, I hadn't really decided I wanted to be a speaker. I, I was I was practicing law, so as a trial attorney, you get to speak all the time. That's a whole nother story. Mm-hmm. But I, I had gone to an event out in Ohio, and it was a seemed like all the speakers and uh, telemarketers had come together, and it was a company called Indec, the Entrepreneurial Development Academy. And I'm like, man. Mm-hmm. I want to do something. I had been, I had recently gotten married. My my wife was a model and an entertainer and actress. So we went out there and they had a group. And you know how you have these big events with speakers and how they, there's that phase where they bring up all the celebrities, you know, oh, here we have, uh, you know, uh, John Lasso and uh, Paul Roberts and he speaks and he has an infomercial. And as people were coming up, you know, the, the, the guy at the front would call and he called so-and-so Bill, and he'd come up, and I heard my name, and I walked up on the stage, my wife looks at me, she's like, and I go up on the stage, and I let it rip, and I had a a, a speech that I had been kind of working on, and I'd sort of seen it in a dream, and I had this thought, and I go up, and I lay it out, and I use the, the action, and it was a whole thing, and, you know, the game of life, you know, you can go strike one, I hit the table, 
strike two, strike three. I said, but the beauty of life is you can go strike four, strike five, and strike six, and that tore the house down. So I come back, my wife, she, she said, Herbert, nobody called your name. I'm like, what? She said, I'm serious, nobody called your name. I went up on the stage, and the guy's name was Bill Dempsey. I went, Bill High, Herb Harris. And he, he, he was shocked. <laughs> like, go right ahead, take the mic. But it was that calling that that here. My, I guess my my subconscious mind was saying, "You better get up and do something. You've been speaking in the woods and talking to the animals. You better come on up there." And so that was like a turning point to actually be deluded in my in my imagination. But I had seen it in my dreams so many times, and I used to visualize myself speaking, and it was a big audience. And lo mm -hmm. and behold, that was it. So those moments you always remember, don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's what I have been doing for many years is visualizing, but also acting it out. Mm -hmm. like I would actually get dressed, get my heels on, get my hair, you know, hair done and walk around uh, my, my living room and actually speak as if I'm speaking in front of a group of people and an audience. Yeah. And so you see, that's what that's when big, you know, big opportunities come when I'm doing that often. Yeah. Well, you know, when you do that, it's almost like you're priming the pump. It's like the universe is always watching you. <laughs> you know? And as you go through the motions, and, and I really, for our listeners, want to get that because I know many times you have a dream, something you want to be, do, or have, and you're not quite sure how to go about. If you can see it in your imagination and act it out in your experience, mm -hmm. you literally prime the pump for it to manifest. Man. Right. And I want to just tell people to don't stop. You know, I read something that said, and you have a podcast, have a podcast and, and show, but most people don't go past like the, I think it's like the eighth episode. They don't go past the eighth episode. And so opportunities stop. Mm -hmm. And by me knowing that when I first started, I never stopped. Even, you know, when you're, you know, you're traveling, you still got to bring your camera, your microphone, your, your, your ring light. You have to make it happen every single week. And so by doing that, that allowed more opportunities to come to me because I didn't stop. I'm always putting out there, you know, putting out, I'm speaking, I'm speaking, whether it's on Facebook lives or whether it's a show or whether it's an interview, I'm always doing something. And I, I am a firm believer that when you put things out, things are going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. So as you as you really make that transition, and I can see the vibrations that uh, a lot of your gift is just the vibration that you send out, your energy. I mean, you're a beautiful lady, but you, in addition, you have a beautiful vibration. And so sometimes it's very hard to say, what was that obstacle? As you're moving, is there one or two main obstacles that, that sort of stood in your way, blocked your way, and, and how did you overcome them? Ooh. I, well, one definitely is fear. Mm -hmm. okay. By being able to move, I say, I always say, bust past fear, this big black cloud, try to stand in your way to stop you from doing what you want to do. When you're able to do that, uh, you, you feel so great on the other end. You know that this is your stepping stone to the next level. Mm -hmm. When you're able to bust past fear. So when fear comes in my way, I know it's a new opportunity. Mm -hmm. new opportunity for me to do something absolutely amazing mm -hmm. and so now i've got i've kind of built the muscle to to for one acknowledge what fear is to see it and say wow you know this is going to be great because i'm going to work hard to get past this and on the other side it's going to be something that i probably have never imagined mm -hmm. so fear is one of them all right and then the other is i'd say just believing in yourself. You know, there's always going to be self doubt. You know, I was reading one of the questions that you asked is self doubt. And of course I self doubt, you know, I doubt myself all the time. Can I do it? You know, am I worthy? But I also know that the next day is a new opportunity. If you're able to wake up and see the sunshine, the next day you have a new opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to feel so much better when I have, I feel more, more better or much better if I continue to work toward that goal right? Then if I stop, mm. right? Yeah. I don't want to live in, in defeat. I don't want to live worrying what if. Mm. I want to live within my passion. 
Mm. And so that's why I'm so happy because I worked past all the fear. I worked out, I bust through the self doubt. And wow. now I can always say I'm living my passion by always, you know, searching and, and, and being available for people who need me, who also want to make a transformation in their life as well. You know, you hit, you, I think you hit the two main points that, that stop most people, self-doubt and fear. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, we, we so often mouth, you know, in, in church, we say, oh, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But then when something confronts us, when we have one of those Goliath moments, and it's like, like you say, you, you're getting ready to go out on the stage. You, you know, when you, when you was, when I was in the fourth grade, we had a play called Pinocchio and I was Pinocchio. And when the, everything we'd gone through all the rehearsals and when it was showtime, they were there in the gymnasium. I locked myself in the bathroom and would not come out. They had to get my dad <laughs> to literally threaten to knock the door down to drag me out. And he literally threw me onto the stage. You know? Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it took me years to overcome that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, if you think back and, and look at, um, you know, the things that you've accomplished, and right now, what would you say is your greatest victory? That, that thing that you say, like, yes. I did it. That's me. I think my greatest victory was when I took the leap and left corporate America to really work on my passion. And, you know, you see someone who's always smiling and so upbeat now, but I definitely was not <laughs> that person when I was working so hard to create someone else's dreams and goals. Right. Uh, and I knew that I was, I was destined for more. I knew that there was something more to life than, than running through the rat, rat race every single day, going to work, feeling exhausted, working my butt off, coming home, feeling underpaid, worn out, and doing all over again the next day. Wow. So uh, I knew uh, the, the, the area of my life that I felt most happiest was when I was helping and mentoring people through it to elevate their communication, their communication skills. Yes. And I knew that I was led that way. And when I left, when I took the leap and quit my job to do this full time, I said, wow, that's it. That was a transformation that happened in my life. And it was a huge push. It wasn't easy now. It was not easy. I was uh, surrounded by a, mentor, a mastermind group who just pushed me and said, Chris, you're destined for more. So they really instilled in me the confidence to be able to do that. And when I did it, wow, I did one, one, for one, I never looked back. And for two, I really live every day just appreciative and grateful for this opportunity to really make my, my dreams and so many other people's dreams happen. Wow. You know, you keep going. I think a point that you've made two or three times is so important to have a group, to have mm. a group around you who support you, who believe in you, who honor you, you know, who, who cheer for you. That is you know, when you don't have that, I mean, there are people who operate, I like to call it journeys from, there are people who are like in a situation where they hate it and, and that that hatred or that dislike for the situation drives them. You know, mm -hmm. we often, uh, there was a lady who was a CEO of a company and, um, you know, a major company and over, over a 15 year trajectory. And they were asking her, in 15 years, you've become top person in this company, your CEO. What was your motivation? How did you do that? Because you were a woman, uh, you know, like 20 years ago, you were a lady with five children, <laughs> okay, married, doing, like literally a housewife. Mm -hmm. How did you go from that to being a CEO? And she said, well, you know, one day my husband was leaving for work. And uh, I said, dear, may I have 10 bucks? And he looked at me, he said, what for? He said, now, I'm a mom with five kids. <laughs> you know, 10 bucks won't even buy two Happy Meals, hardly. Okay. And she said, when he asked me that, he said, she said, it made me so angry that she made a, a, she made a decision that nobody, she will never be in that position again, where mm -hmm. she has to ask somebody for something and they can say no. And that was her driving, 
Yeah, that was her driving thing. So many times people, that's the thing that drives them to where they are. But the other side of that is where you are nurtured in an environment like you were nurtured in an environment where people support you, where people uplift you. So when you have those moments of doubt, there's somebody there to say, hey, it's okay. Keep moving. Wow. Right. And not only that, but, you know, I got you, you know, Chrissy, you know, we're here for you. Make that leap. If something goes wrong, it was a community of over, I think, 4,000. We got you. Mm. Don't worry about it. We, we have you. Yes. Wow. And, um, and having that support, uh, it, it's so important. You know, people think they can do this alone. Uh, I don't know how you can. If you can, that's great. I, I can, I couldn't. And I always surround myself by, I have a few groups I'm a member of that really, just, just really love me. They're my other family. Yes. And they have my back. They yes. have my back. And they look out for me. And I, of course, vice versa. But you must be around a community of people who are going to help you. I mean, we have the mastermind on Tuesdays, mm -hmm. clubhouse, clubhouse room that we're growing. But that's an area you can bring problems and concerns and get advice from people who have been there, yes. who've gone through the trials and tribulations that you're dealing with right now and who are able to support you. I love that. Yes. Um, and having other groups as well in, in different uh, areas of your life, whether it's you know more professional or it's more business-minded, more, it's, I don't know if it's mom life or health life, whatever, having a support group. Wow. And yesterday, I, you know, I've been, you know, it's my fitness journey. And I asked my friend, I said, you know, I've been trying to do it, trying to do it for, for months. And I said, okay, I need an accountability partner. Will you be my accountability partner? And he said, yes. I said, great. So we're going to start tomorrow, right? We're, you know, we're working together. Yeah. Which is great. So I'll check in today on my weight and my BMI and he'll, he'll give me his and we'll work. You have to have community. You have to have relationships yeah. Yeah. and all that involves about being able to communicate, right? Communicate yes. and establish those relationships that are going to help yeah. you to thrive in life. Well, you know, when I was writing the 12 Universal Laws of Success, it's very funny. I had to leave New York to do it because I, you know, I was so involved with law, you know, as a, as a lawyer's lawyer, somebody would always call you to work on a case and the money was so good. It's like, let me set aside what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me go do this and then I'll come back to it. And I think so many times in life, we keep setting stuff aside. And then one day you look along and like, man, where did everything go? But um, when I left New York, I moved to Cleveland and uh, Tony Brown, uh, he had a TV program, Tony Brown's Journal. And I, do it, was doing some work for him. And I said, I, it just happened to be surrounded by a group of people who encouraged the writing of the book. And they helped me get on that, that accountability partner. Like, look, I, I don't know how creative I'll be, but I know I can, I can sit at this desk from nine to 12. <laughs> okay. And that my accountability is like, Hey, we don't know when the brilliance is coming, but if you're not sitting there, you won't be there when it comes. And so for actually nine to one, that was our one of our accountability pieces to be at that oh, wow. computer from nine to okay. one. Oh, and, well, yeah. yeah, and uh, that that was without that the book would never have been written. It would have been another one of those you know one day projects and someday projects. Yeah, someday. And, and if we had never written the book, then it would the whole the whole world of you know we are in nine languages and. Uh, it's the over 800,000 copies that we know of. We found copies from different countries that we didn't know of, you know. <laughs> Just like, at least I'm honored that it was good enough to steal. <laughs> okay, so. I love it. I love it. I, I love that you, you went away to focus strictly on your book. Yes, yes. Wow. That's amazing. But by doing that, it made it so successful. Yes, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's a great idea. Yeah. I love that. So I'm going to kind of wrap up now because uh, I know that we've had some incredible conversation. I have a question, an interesting question. If you look back on your younger self, hmm. what advice would you give your younger self based on where you are right now? The advice I would have given my younger self, I learned about this thing called community and masterminding. Yeah. And when I joined Toastmasters, that was my 20s, I definitely would have looked for a community of supportive people a lot younger mm. in my life. I think I would have gotten much farther than where I am much earlier. 
and it wouldn't be so many years of trial and error. And so I, I, I was in organizations, but they weren't what I needed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they weren't more, I guess, uh, in the realms of more personal development. Mm -hmm. I would have surrounded myself by more people who could help me develop personally and professionally than just the organizations of where I was passionate about. You know, I was, you know, part of NAACP, which is, you know, it's great. The, the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, which is great, but, mm -hmm. they, but they weren't developing me. And I wasn't, I didn't learn a lot of things. I think I was like a late bloomer in learning all of these things. Mm -hmm. And I see that that's a lot of cultures have that very young, right? Mm -hmm. These communities and groups that they're just grown into. Yes. And help support them and guide them and mentor them along their path. And I didn't have that. So I had to learn all that myself. And that's why I just took a long time, but it's okay. <laughs> you know, uh, maybe I needed to be at that point in my life and learn this journey be, to be able to better help other people. I don't know. Um, but that's one thing that I would have, um, I would have loved to do at a younger age. But I also was in an area of my life where I didn't know the community that I was in. They didn't do personal development. They didn't know about personal development. Mm. So I would have maybe hopefully thought that out more. Yes. Wow. Okay. Now that's that's profound. That yeah, yeah. Get there quicker. Be mm -hmm. aware quicker. And you know, a lot of times you don't know that you don't know. <laughs> it's like if I knew I didn't know, I'd do something about it. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. I didn't know. Yeah. Now I have another question. Think about yourself at 85 years old. 85 years old. 85 yeah. years old. What advice would you give your current self when you're 85 years old? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, well, going back to the conversation we had before we started, uh, that, you know, life isn't guaranteed, you know, for us the next day. And I try to live my life like that. And to just continue to keep going. Don't get bogged down by negativity that you see around yourself, um, insecurities in myself, self-doubt, and keep thriving, keep growing, and understand that the world is and opportunities are limitless. Mm. The world is open for me, mm -hmm. it, but I have to be the one to do it. I have to be the one to receive it. I have to be the one to go get it. Wow. And to, and to not, not stop, to not stop. It's up to me. If it's to be, it's up to me. It's up it's to up me. To me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, let me wrap up now. You know, I have enjoyed the the uh, mastermind sessions we've been doing on Tuesdays at the clubhouse at five o'clock, and we've been focusing on the twelve universal laws of success. From what you've heard so far, any you know thoughts you have about the book or how it's been used or how it you know how it might be used. Well, it, well, your topics and that mastermind are just astounding. I mean, I'm just just inundated by what you've learned and what you're teaching. I, I love the um, law, universal law of, of the mind, of thought, mm -hmm. because that's one area that I struggle with the most in my life. But it's so important when you get this down, mm -hmm. that your thoughts create your life, your thoughts create things. That's when transformation, that's when things are going to start open up for you and for me too. And that's one thing that I knew I'd say about, oh, let's say 15 years ago was when I first was introduced to uh, the law of thought. And that's one thing that I had to develop because I was so negative and so down and insecure about myself. But now I can see that it's more on the more positive side. Mm -hmm. And as uh, I've learned and developed the strength and muscle to do this, think more, more uh, at, you know, that the glass is what has half full instead of half empty mm -hmm. and more optimistic, you know, things are starting to happen in my life much faster. And so that is a huge key to the success of anyone in business and your life and your profession and your health is your thought. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning to apply it after you talked about that. I think it was last week you talked about that I've learned to really apply that in my life and so I'm sitting down each morning and really thinking about how can I give love to my my body how can I give love to my home how can I give love to my business how can I do this 
in a way that's going to experience greater results because I know everything you've all the power of your mind you can transform your health mm -hmm. uh, financial situation relationships anything but it all starts here mm, wow well Christian love you're I wow you're wow not me wow you're wow <laughs> I have enjoyed you know just being with you and sharing this this these these thoughts in this conversation has been a journey you know really and truly and, and I find it you know, our listeners, everybody hears something different. You know, there's that person that will hear that point. They say, wow, she's beautiful. She's talented. But to say that you had to come overcome the speaking issue, overcome getting in front of a crowd, overcome self-doubt, okay, overcome fear, that lets somebody else know that it's possible. You know, that, that that's why I love stories and I love doing the success talks because once you know it's possible, it's a whole different mindset. When Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile, you know, up until that time, for, for what, for the previous 5,000 years, there was no recorded, you know, uh, uh, instance of somebody running a, a sub four-minute mile. And then once he did it, within a year, like eight or nine people did it. <laughs> they knew it was possible, right? That's it. That's it. So... I thank you so much for a great interview. As we wrap up, is there anything well, that you'd like to share? You know, I've asked some questions and we've gone so many places, but anything you'd like to share with the world, with the with the person who's out there making those decisions in their lives of what to do next? Well, one thing that I always say is the model taken from the Navy SEALs is never give up and never quit. Never mm -hmm. give up and never quit on yourself, on your goals, on your dreams, your aspirations. And remember that each day, each day you wake up and see the sun shine on your face, you have another opportunity to make a change in your life. And so make the best of it. Well, Christy Love, thank you so much for being with us today. To our listeners out there, let me tell you something, folks. I hope you had a pad and had a pen and you took some notes. And even if you did, I know you're going to want to listen to this over and over because somewhere in these words, somewhere in this journey, there's you. There's that word uh, you need to hear to transform yeah. your life from what it is to exactly what you want it to be. Always knowing that you can be what you want to be, do what you want to do, and have anything you desire. Always knowing that the best is yet to come. So it is.